I've got this um, sample that I did, um, I think mid of this year after build. So we announced universal actions for adaptive cards, which had a lot of cool features in it. So we already have a PNP video on universal action, what the capabilities are, what we can achieve uh, with these new features. So I'm not going to go, uh, go in and open up the PowerPoint because I know you've probably there is a video there and I will also link that in uh, a deck that I've shared with David. Um, so we have like around four features we discussed um, during the time for build uh, we, uh, for this adaptive cards like from 1.4 uh, upwards, you have features like um, contextual views. So you can have adaptive cards uh, that would show up different views for different people. With This was a game changer uh, when I announced it. Um, it was one of the coolest thing that I could think of because, you know, previously adaptive cards uh, would just show up, you know, the same view for every single person that would be, um, you know, you could change the uh, messaging, you can update it stuff, but everything is just like in that same conversation, you would see the changes happening, all the users having the same view. So context contextual view was one thing that I was excited about. Um, and another feature was sequential workflow that, and, and, and that what that means is every user would get to take part in a in a workflow process at their own sweet time like they didn't uh, if so, one person went ahead in that conversation and updated or did some action on the adaptive card it wouldn't change uh, it for other users who haven't started the workflow yet and that was another uh, big improvement in that area as well. Um, and then the other one was uh, introducing the refresh capability for the adaptive cards. So you could go ahead and update um, the card and you know you could see the status updated and stuff like that. So these are the three things I'm going to be demonstrating in the sample that uh, is currently in the PNP gallery as well for Teams. Uh, it's called a feedback bot. I'm not sure if it's actually a feedback because I created it as uh, for a demonstration purpose um, because there were some, uh, I think right after build, we had some samples from the community as well. I remember um, Nandeep had a uh, sample on incident uh, management and there was one from Waterman, um on another approval process and they were in C Sharp. So um, I took that opportunity to create something in the Node.js, JavaScript, TypeScript uh, space as well for folks who are uh, into um, that framework. So I um, have this bot, so I'm just going to share my screen and jump right into the demo. So I already have the project up and running and I'll go to the source code once I've got this working and once I've showed you the demo. Uh, but I have like two users, uh, three users actually logged in and side by side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, invoke uh, this uh, this feedback bot. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to ask some questions to my colleagues or my uh, you know teammates here in a channel called PMP Demo. Um, and then I want to see their responses. So most of the time, uh, what happens is we ask a question. It might be something really important, like, you know, what are you watching these days? What series are you watching and stuff like that? And then, you know, they, there might be people who reply to it, but then you lose the conversation because there's something else coming in between. And then you don't know what the others said about this. It's some, somewhat like a conversation, you know, just keeping everything in one place. So I'm just going to go ahead and invoke my bot. So it's called Cardbots. I'm going to ask a question. How is the new series? I'm just going to some random questions. New series, Squid Game, because that's what I'm watching these days. Squid, what was it called? Squid Game? I think it is. Only I can spell things. OK, so I'm going to ask this question as a person. So this is my initiator. Um, who is initiating this bot and it will throw me a base card. So this is what's happening under the hood as well. It will throw a card to everyone. I uh, hope it's working. Uh, yeah, cool. So you can see for a tiny moment there, you can see that everybody in that in that whole team in that whole channel can see uh, the base card being sent out but immediately for the initiator it changes it updates this is the contextual view that i was talking to you about like based on what your role is in that particular uh, workflow um, you will see uh, the cards so uh, in my case uh, here uh, he to admin he uh, or she is the um, initiator so immediately the base card updated and it showed me like a summary of you know if my teammates responded or not 
In the meantime, I'm logged in as Adil here, who gets a card where um, she could respond. So I'm just going to go ahead and respond to that. And she she wasn't uh, a big fan. She said it's overrated. Um, cool. So she has sent her response now on this particular question. You can see that the message updates itself uh, at the same time it refreshes for every uh, person involved here. So you can see here the, uh, the information is already captured um, and she got a card that says thank you for your response. So you don't need to do any more uh, response on that. Um, and you have the admin, I mean, uh, she or he can see that Adil responded to it with a reply. Um, it's it's a super simple uh, demo. Like I said, it, it wants, I, I wanted to demonstrate the capabilities of uh, Adaptive Card, but you can think of uh, other scenarios where this could be uh, used as well. So we have seen now contextual views feature, and we also see the refresh capability of Adaptive Cards. One thing we didn't see is a sequential workflow, right? So we have um, normally before previously what happened was when you have an adaptive card you make some uh, you know you go ahead and approve or things like that that card changes for everyone in that conversation um, but if I'm logged in as another person who did not respond um, in our case um, it is now Alex I'm logged in as Alex Alex can see this card again uh, because he hasn't started his uh, process yet so he can see the question and um, he can reply then and there so this is the uh, feature that they're talking about, the sequential workflow. So Alex can go ahead and reply saying it, it is great. OK, um, there is someone who actually likes it um, and respond back. Um, immediately what happens is um, it updates the card for every single person in that channel and shows, you know, um, the summary uh, for the admin or the initiator, whoever initiated this bot. And, you know, nothing changes for um, Adele because she she responded. So that's fine. And for Alex, um, it should be, again, similar to um, Adele. So this is basically the uh, demo demo part of it, uh, how it all works together and how you can all get all these features now with just few uh, changes because they the game changer was that they introduced some uh, refreshed properties uh, and also the response, sending the adaptive card response back into the bot. So that was the game changer for all this to work together. Apart from this, they also had the feature of uh, it you know, being universal. That was the whole concept, right? So you have universal actions means it works in Teams and it works um, in Outlook as well because the backend is now uh, the same bot uh, registered. So uh, you just have to open up the channel to Outlook. I unfortunately cannot demonstrate that in, in the sample because it's uh, the code's not there. But so I will jump in, uh, jump into the code aspect, you know, the sample and open up and show you how I built this. So uh, I'm not going to go into detail, but I'll show you what really helped me because I have all this documented in my blog. So let's jump into the VS Code. So this is basically my project. And it is probably um, I started off at a very good uh, base project and thanks to Bob German, who is my colleague and friend who suggested uh, the uh, Yeoman generator for Bot Builder. It was a game changer for me because I was looking for something really simple to start with and I wanted a structure or a project that does not have a lot of things going on because obviously I wanted to learn these concepts first. So I used the generator for that and it was perfect. I used an EcoBot template for it and it just created this bot.ts um, and my entry file. And that was it. That was the only thing I need to worry about. So here are a few things that I've done extra is um, I have a memory. Uh, so I have some conversation data that I needed to store in order to make sure that I know who the who the initiator is, you know, the user ID of that person. Um, I wanted to know who responded so that I can show them a different view uh, or a different card. So for that reason, I needed some sort of a memory. So I used this uh, memory storage shares, which is what you see in this file. Other changes is basically the main changes are all happening in the bot. So I have the activity handler uh, here. And for what it's worth, I have included comments in most of the lines because uh, again, this is a demonstrating sample, so I, I find it really helpful when people uh, will see some comments. So go ahead and check this out in our PNP gallery and you can uh, probably understand what I'm trying to do here. But 
you know, it's it's just basic stuff. And like I said, getting the user information and things like that. And what I'm really interested to show you today is this invoke activity function. That is what I override. Um, and then I put my logic in for all that refresh activity that's happening. And here what's happening is uh, based on the action on the card, like if I'm going ahead and submitting the card, um, then I'm checking, I'm storing this information of this user um, into uh, the payload, into the memory, and then in using it in the payload to refresh that card so that, you know, first I send out the base card and then I would check if that's an initiator. Boom, I show the initiator's card, which is like a summary card. And um, if someone else goes ahead and put the form uh, information in and uh, click the boom button, um, then I would go ahead. So that's a switch case here. OK, and then I go ahead and add that person into the list of user ID. And based on who they are, they're not the initiator. OK, show them the other card that says thank you. And um, this is how it works. So it's like um, it, it was pretty interesting to do this. But thanks to the refresh uh, payload, I mean, refresh property or the object in the payload that made it possible. So this is that extra piece of uh, stuff they added. So this user ID is where you can add uh, these users who are active participants um, of this workflow. Like if in, 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 a, in a business scenario, it would be a person who's approving, uh, a person who you know created an incident form or something like that, that those user IDs can go into the payload and they could kick off a refresh of that uh, adaptive card and show something new. So I think we have just one more minute for this uh, meeting. So yeah, I really wanted to just show you that. And finally, I will share this links. Uh, basically, I think I have shared this deck with David as well. So I've got the blog. I've got the source, source code in PNP uh, gallery. I've got, if you want to read more about universal actions, you can go to aka.ms slash PNP hyphen UAM. I also linked in the generator that I used to build this one out. So yeah. That's uh, basically the demo. Fantastic, Rabia. This is really awesome stuff. Very exciting. Thank you for sharing it today. Links are in the chat. They will also be in the blog if you're watching the video. Mm -hmm.